Good day, everyone. I am Nigi Wamsama from Mintech, and I'll be giving a brief talk on the ANC Mintech Exchange PSD cluster, focusing mostly on the success enhanced drama spectroscopy project, which is the development of SES biosensors for infectious diseases. I'm going to introduce my institution, its research, and the different research groups. So AMD is a research and development institution that focuses on mineral processing and metallurgical engineering products and services to industries worldwide. It has three technical clusters which carry the load of the research and development and they are the mineral processing and characterization cluster which is subdivided to mineralogy, analytical chemistry and mineral processing Secondly, we have the extraction metallurgy cluster, which is which houses the metallurgy divisions, which is your biometallurgy, your hydro, and your pyrometallurgy. And the third, the last but not the least, is the mining, materials, and automation cl cluster, which houses measurement and control, advanced materials, and the mining and mineral economics. And I am from the advanced material division division, which is also abbreviated as AMD, is mandated to serve the national interest in research, development, and technology transfer, that is to promote mineral technology and foster the establishment and expansion of industries in the field of mineral and products which will be derived from that. Slide 5 sort of summarizes the AMD division. It houses four research groups, which is the catalysis, physical metallurgy, health platform, and nanotechnology. The use of the HPC platform started with the catalysis group, which was were main, they were mainly using it for the highest projects, which deals with the development of dual cells. It later then expanded into the physical metallurgy and the health platform group. The Physical metallurgy mostly uses it for calculations to enhance their production of uh, memory shaped alloys. And in the health platform, it is used by the diagnostic group. The diagnostic group focuses on the fabrication of diagnostic kits or diagnostic um, diagnostics for infectious diseases such as malaria, HIV and AIDS, and the recent COVID-19. So as I said before, this talk will focus mostly on the diagnostic group and with, with a focus on the surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy biosensors. So the SAS phenomenon has been around for the last four to five decades. And in a nutshell, it's just basically the amplification or the enhancement of what could have been a very weak traditional Raman signal in the presence of surfaces or substrates such as rough and plasmonic metallic nanoparticles that is your gold, your silver, and your copper nanoparticles. And the substrates have even expanded to a two-dimensional material such as graphene. So the sketch over here shown in figure one shows the architecture of a traditional cell biosensor whereby you have a support and then on the support you are going to chemically assemble the cell substrate in the form of metallic nanoparticles, which could, it could be gold or silver. And then on that, you will chemically bind a capture antibody. The purpose of the capture antibody is to identify and capture the antigen of interest. So if maybe this was a malaria biosensor, this would be a malaria antigen. So it binds it at a, different, a certain epitope. And then in addition to that, you are going to have a detection antibody, which also identifies and binds the antigen, but at a different epitope compared to this one, so there is no overlap. This one also, which is a detection antibody, is also conjugated to the cell substrate in the form of the metallic nanoparticles. In a case whereby what you analyze, what you're trying to sense is Raman actin, you can be, it, it does have characteristic Raman fingerprints then you don't need the, 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 the first substrate ends here, you don't need the Raman reporter. However, most the biological molecules are not Raman active, so in that case, then you need a Raman reporter or a Raman tag. And thiols are most popular, um, are popularly used as Raman tags. The purpose of this is to indirectly confirm the 
presence of this via the characteristic peak of the Raman head. And it confirms that indirectly because everything here is chemically conjugated. So there is no way you can actually have this in the absence of that. I hope that is clear. So our division adopted the CERF platform because of various reasons such as high sensitivity and the fact that we can both quali qualitate on quantity, like it's both qualitative and a quantitative detection method, has a capability of multiplexing and says it is a semi molecule fingerprint. To come up with a, a SPEF platform which is reproducible and is very much rich in most of these characteristic properties which I've, I've just mentioned, we sort of need to understand the chemistry of even the precursor materials before you can put them together. You sort of need an insight into their chemistry, their conjugation. And the HPC platform has enabled that for us. For example, mostly we use citrate capped nanoparticles in the synthesis or in the fabrication of our system. So we needed to understand how the citrate ion binds or sits on, on, on the metallic clusters. And we were able to use Monte Carlo to actually get an idea of how actually it binds and what even happens as you increase the amount of the citrate ion onto the clusters as it's shown by this by, by these images by figure two over here by by figure two over here it seems like the citric ions they actually prefer a certain facet of the nanoparticle and as you add more they actually pack on top of the others in that particular site which they prefer and this here sort of informs the experiment in the sense of how much of the citrate you're supposed to use in your experiment and in addition to that it also controls the size because everything is size dependent as well. So mentioned that our system seems to be sensing biological molecules, so it is it needs to have a Raman tag. In the in our case, we are using four methyl benzoic acid as our as our Raman tag, and it is known to have the the acid end on one side and the thion end. So using the HPC platform, we're also able to study the chemistry of this binding into the nanoparticles. What exactly does it favor? Which facet does it favor? Which end favors which facet? You know, so we're able to do a study on that, and we're able to deduce that there's even differences between the nanoparticles themselves. What maybe silver favors is not what gold favors in terms of the facets and the binding terminal. And then since the whole platform is going to be using biological molecules, we're also able, using Stonehenge to, and Monte Carlo, to actually introduce a biological molecule whereby we downloaded a plasmodium falciparum antibody from the second bank and we're able to see how exact to study its interaction with the, with the clusters which have been conjugated to the tag. And we're able to deduce that it's actually a desorption reaction. It's not a, a based on the differences on the on the distance between the two atoms of like the the, the the two entities so all of this facilitated the whole production or the whole synthesis of this of the biosensor in the lab whereby we went into the lab and we were able to synthesize the biosensor and then we tested it even on malaria infected blood non-infectious of course supplied by who from the blood was from different uh, regions which is Nigeria, Santa Lucia, and the Philippines. What's worth noting is also the fact that the blood had different parasite loadings in it, and our system was able to actually track that, was able to capture the fact that it had so to sort of quantify the different loadings of the parasite in the different bloods. And also, interestingly, we did um, a, a repetitive study to find out how fast it can actually capture, and we're able to go as low as three minutes our system was able to show like Raman peaks, uh, 4 MBA peaks, even at three minutes, of course, with, their expert, with more time, then there was more enhancement. So on the, first, on the malaria first biosensor, we were able to do that. Then beginning of, or oh, the beginning of, it was late 2019 to beginning of 2020, we had the COVID pandemic sort of sweeping through our world. And then as a diagnostic group, we also sort of tried to jump into that to try and see what we can 
come up with in terms of diagnostic. We had a group which was working on on on, on rabbit diagnostic kits, the antigen and the whole and the um, anti antigen antigen and antibody tracking ones. And I was also on the group for the CEF where we try to adapt the existing CEF platform or probe for COVID. The main idea was to try and use the ACE2 uh, COVID receptor as our as our detection because it it will be able to 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 to, to identify the COVID antigen. We had one antibody at that time. We only had one COVID antibody which we used as our capture. So what we did, we also used the uh, the, the HPC platform, Strongasia to. After that, we downloaded um, um, a SARS-CoV-2 spike receptor from the protein bank, and then we were able to analyze it by, and we were able to analyze it and identify reactive amino groups, which we then data of the ACE2, which we then synthesized in the lab and we conjugated with our cess tag and, 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 and silver, silver or gold. And this was tried, was tested on an antigen, a COVID antigen. However, it gave very poor sensitivity. So in a nutshell, that's what, oh, those are the two projects that we've been able to, to, to use the HPC platform on. So it's mostly the study of the material, the chemistry of the material that we use in, in, in our different products at, as a diagnostic group. So the second part of the presentation, I will just talk a bit on why we need access to the HPC, to the HPC resources, the challenges and um, um, research in impacts. So we surely need access to these various codes because we don't have a license to them, so we're really grateful to HPC, to CHPC for, for, for access to the codes. And then we also run very large systems and for us to be able to run our, our, our systems at, at CHPC is, is really great because our computers cannot be able to handle most of the systems that we need to run and the calculations also, the deep chemistry calculations that we need to run, even studying your orbitals and etc. So all of this, it facilitates the laboratory experiment and once we get that right, then we can be able to have prototypes. So there is the, I think the impact thus far is that we are able to produce papers from this and we have a few students graduating as well and then we have more students in the pipeline and then we also were able to register a prototype, the malaria cells prototype and we uh, schedule thin with up and we hope we can go through to clinical trials and to and pass that and be able to, to, to be used by the medical the medical uh, department. Uh, thank you so much to CHPC for access to these different uh, codes.